What's up guys, Justin here, Saturday morning, 9.49 a.m. Just finished putting my list together of all the stores I wanna hit for today. Uh, heading over first to a buybacks store, which I'm hoping is open, because I drove by one yesterday while I was driving around between other stores, and uh, they were closed. And I know there's some other buybacks locations around the country that are closing, so hoping this one's open. They're supposed to open at 10, so I should get there just after 10, and I will uh, update you guys when I make it over there. All right, guys, I made it. This place is huge, and it looks like it's open, so let's go check it out. Buybacks wasn't too bad. I spent way longer than I thought I was going to in there. They had like a buy three, get one free sale going on. So I was trying to pick and choose to get the best deal for myself, you know. Um, I got some decent uh, Game Boy Advance games, uh, some filler Game Boy stuff. I got a PS2 game for Ryan and uh, spent about $40. I'll recap it all at the end. Um, but their PS2 selection in there was insane. It was like one of the better PS2 selections I've ever seen. And it, they're not even primarily a video game store, so that was kind of an impressive. All their like NES and Super Nintendo stuff was kind of overpriced, so I didn't get any of that. But I, I feel like I got a couple good deals. Again, I'll, I'll show it all at the end. I just pulled up to VGMX here, which I believe stands for Video Game and Music Exchange. Uh, so it might be kind of like the buybacks I was just at, but uh, just a lot smaller. I mean, the building looks a lot smaller, but let's go see what they got. long box PS1 pickups from VGMX. Uh, it was a cool little store. They had like a mix of everything in there. Uh, game stuff, uh, movies, they had CDs and a bunch of like tabletop gaming stuff. Uh, for the most part, the prices were pretty fair. Um, there was a few, like some of the more popular stuff they had kind of overpriced. Like there was an Ocarina of Time in there for $40, which is like almost twice what it's worth. But um, for the most part, the prices were good. I got good deals on those PS1 games. They gave me 10% off too, I think. I don't know what the deal was there. I like made an account, I guess, and they gave me 10% off. I really wanted that Super Metroid that I showed. Uh, it was 150 though. And if it had had like all the inserts and stuff in there, I probably would have bought it because I think it would have been 10% off of 150, but it was just the cartridge manual and box. There was none of the extra stuff in there. The box is in a little bit better shape than the one I have at home, but for that price, I just can't justify the upgrade. So I'm not exactly sure where I'm headed next. I think I have a little bit of a drive to get to the next store. Just rolled up to play it, trade it games, movies, music. This is like one of three of these stores that I have on my list today, so I'm hoping it's decent. I don't really wanna waste my time with the other two if it's horrible, but we'll go see. I did not end up buying anything from that store, but I think their other two locations are at least worth a stop today. Uh, the guy that was working there was super chill and everything, and the first thing he said to me when I walked in the door was, hey, let me know if I need to discount anything for you. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. And then I, when I started looking around, I realized why. It's because they have everything there priced like super high. So it's kind of nice that those prices aren't firm and they're willing to wheel and deal a little bit, but 
I don't know if that's the route I would go if I had a store, you know, just because, you know, it's kind of sticker shock for some people uh, just to see, like, you know, super high prices, even though they're negotiable. So anyway, like I said, I'll probably stop at the other two locations that are nearby here just to see what they have. I just pulled up to a store. It's over here. It's called Pixel Palace Games. I like the name. Let's go see if they're worthy of it. Some of these stores are like in the weirdest places. Like I was just driving through, like just like last night, I was driving through like this residential farmland for miles and my phone is telling me, oh, you're two or three minutes away from a game store. And, and then sure enough, when you finally get like a quarter mile away, that's when stuff starts showing up. Um, also these weird like drive-through liquor stores. I don't know how I feel about those. Those are not a thing in Michigan. So I don't know if that's like an Ohio thing or if other states have those, but I've never seen those before. I made one purchase from Pixel Palace Games. I got Pack Attack for the Super Nintendo. It's just the cartridge in the box, but it was only $9.89, uh, just over $10 with tax. And um, the cartridge in there is kind of beat up, but I already have a good condition cartridge at home. So I'll throw that one in there. I know I can get at least $5, if not a little more back on the cartridge that's in here. So it'll be a box for four or $5, which I'm willing to pay. They have a complete in box, a minty complete in box Mega Man for the original Game Boy. Uh, the first Mega Man for $50 in there that I'm really tempted to go back in and buy. I just never see that kind of stuff. $50 is a eh, pretty fair price on it. Maybe just a little bit under what it would go for. Um, but I just, I don't know if it's cheap enough to justify it. All right, next store is in this big mall here. I hope, I don't know. I don't see a sign for it anywhere out here, but my phone says it's in the mall, so I got some time to kill anyway. Let's go wander around. I didn't grab anything from Level 1 Games. Uh, they had some cool stuff in there. The prices, for the most part, seemed pretty fair. They had a $400 Super System card for the Turbo Graphics that Ryan told me to look out for, but I don't think he wants to pay $400 for it. So uh, it was cool to see anyway. But uh, yeah, I walked around the mall for like a half hour or whatever, and now I am headed out to, I got like four more stores to hit, and I'm, they're all like in this general area. So shouldn't take me much longer to get there. I just rolled up to Warp Zone. I had a few people recommend this to me on our Facebook page uh, when I mentioned I was going to be in the Columbus area, so let's do it. I didn't grab anything from Warp Zone. Uh, it was a cool little store. The prices from what I saw were decent. There was a lot of import stuff in there as well, so that was kind of cool to see. The only issue was that there had there's like a group of people in there and they're playing Dr. Mario on the NES Classic and I, one of them was like streaming on Twitch, I think. And so there's a the big group of them was like crowded around like all the glass cases and stuff with all the nice stuff in it so I really didn't get that great of a look at like everything that they had in the glass cases um, I didn't get any footage of it um, because of that so uh, it didn't look like anything that I probably would have bought anyway it was just one of those things where I was like all right come on like get out of the way <laughs> so anyway uh, I got like three more stores to hit so on we go a quick five minute drive later and we are at another play it uh, games movies music whatever the one with the obnoxiously high prices that barter and someone just walked into the store holding a laundry basket. And here's another guy walking in with a box of games. Oh, let's go check it out.
Well, this one was nothing like the other location. Uh, the prices in here were more on point, um, maybe a little bit high, but but closer. Anyway, uh, I didn't pick anything up. There was a crash in the boys on the NES that I almost grabbed out of their case. It was $26.99. It's like a $30 cartridge. Um, so if it had been like a couple dollars cheaper, I probably would have grabbed it. But I'm kind of hanging out and waiting to see because that guy that walked in with the laundry basket, it was like a PS1 mini or PS one system that the guy wouldn't take because it didn't have a power adapter. So I was kind of waiting to see if he was going to like walk out with it. I'd be like, hey, you want five bucks for that? But uh, yeah, whatever. I don't need another one of those anyway. So a couple more stores to hit. All right, there's a store behind me called UGA Games. I don't know what that stands for, but uh, let's go find out. The prices in there were kind of on the higher side, I think. Uh, I couldn't really tell for most of the stuff in the glass cases because you couldn't see the prices on it. And as you guys know by now, that irritates me. There was a few things in there that, you know, I would have liked to have seen the prices on, but just judging by the prices of everything else in there, I was kind of like, eh, it's probably not. It's probably gonna be a no-go. So anyway, headed to the last store now. I think it's another one of those play it, trade it stores, so I'm not expecting too much, but uh, we'll see if I can't end today with some pickups. Last stop of the day, the third play it, trade it, games, movies, music, buy, sell, trade store thing. Not expecting much, but throw the lucky hat on and see if we can end this day on a good note. I will say this location had a lot more cooler stuff to look at, even though I didn't buy anything. Uh, they had that Panzer Dragoon Saga in there. They had a little Samson cartridge too for the NES that I don't think I got that in the video, but they had a couple cool box systems too, the Pikachu 64 and the, the Jungle Green 64 set. And I just, I mean, the prices were just a little bit up there for me. Uh, so anyway, that's gonna do it for today. I'm all video game shopped out for today. I mean, you, you go to so many stores and you hit so many, you know, look at so many games that everything starts to just like blend together. Like I remember all the individual stores, but everything in them is just like kind of a blur at this point. Uh, so anyway, I'm gonna head back to the uh, hotel room and I'll show a quick recap of the stuff I did get today, which wasn't a ton, but you know, it was a fun day. I'm glad I got to get out and check out all these stores that I'd never been to before. Well, after hitting nine video game stores today, I don't have a ton to show for it, but let's hop into this here. Um, this is a better look at the pickups from the buybacks, the first stop of the morning. So, like I said, they had a really good PS2 selection there, and I grabbed The Adventures of Darwin. I had never seen this one before. $7.99, I was like, okay, I, that seems pretty fair. So I picked that one up, and then I also picked up Rock and Roll Racing, which was $9.99. And I was honestly probably just gonna get those two, and then they told me they were doing a buy three, get one free. So I was like, well, I might as well pick out like one more you know, decent game or whatever, and then I'll get one for free. So I went with Blackthorn and Breath of Fire 2. So this one was priced at $9.99, this one was $10.99. So it was kind of like I bought these two and the Rock and Roll Racing and got the Darwin for free. Um, this is gonna be probably a gift for Ryan. You know, I don't collect for PS2, but I think he will enjoy this one. And then for the Game Boy stuff, I was just gonna get this one here, no judgment, uh, Barbie Ocean Discovery. I didn't have it for the collection. All of these were 99 cents though, 
And when they told me they were doing the buy three, get one free, I was like, okay, well, I'll just pick up a few more, you know, because it was just worth it, you know. So I ended up grabbing like six of them and I got two of them free, essentially. So that was for the collection. The rest of these, I was like, well, they're at least going to go like in my $2 bin for our shows or whatever. So I'll make a few dollars and I'll get Barbie for free <laughs> in the end. And then moving on to uh, the VGMX store here, uh, better look at those long box games I got. Air Combat here, obviously needs a new case. It's got a big old crack there. And then this one is Warhawk. It's kind of cut off by the price tag there. But that one seems to be in good shape. And I thought the prices on those were fair. $4.99, $7.99. Again, they gave me 10% off. I don't really know why, but I'm not gonna complain. So it was like $12 and some change for those. And then quickly, the Pack Attack here. Again, it's just the cartridge in the box, but these eeny weeny <laughs> price tags here, $9.99. It was like $10 and some change with tax, but you know, I just wanted it for the box. I'll be able to flip the cartridge and get half my money back anyway. So again, not a huge haul for you know nine video game stores, but I really wasn't planning to walk out of these stores with bagfuls of games or anything. I just kind of wanted to drive around, check out the Columbus area, and uh, see what you know the video game stores had to offer. Okay, it is Sunday afternoon right now. We are back up in Toledo on our way home, checking out this other replay location here. Um, we had this one on the list to hit on Friday morning, but since I spent so much time at that guy's house loading up, I didn't have time. So we got this one and one more game store to hit. Well, here we go. <laughs> There's the store I spent the most money at on this trip, $86, I think. I got some, well, some decent quality stuff and some filler stuff. Uh, the store was way better than the other replay, although the employees here were kind of just like space cadets. Like the girl that was ringing me up for this stuff, like started helping somebody else in the middle of the transaction and she started putting stuff up. I'm like, come on, like, let's go here. So anyway, yeah, I'll show you guys uh, what I got when, I, when we get home. Just arrived at our last video game stop of the trip, somewhere behind me. It's called Video Games Underground. Let's do it. Check out what I got from Video Games Underground. A box Model 3 system. It doesn't have the cardboard, but if you guys remember, if you guys follow the Facebook page, I picked one up a while back on eBay that had the cardboard, but the box was all destroyed. So I have a cardboard insert for the Model 3. The system's in there. A couple other games as well. Caught them slipping, I think, on that Onimusha, and I picked up the Game Boy game. I'll show it all in more detail when I do a recap. Trying to film this pickup recap and all my cat wants to do is play. This was kind of the grand finale here on the drive home from Ohio. Uh, my biggest hauls from the actual game stores on the whole trip here. So all this NES stuff here came from that second replay location in Toledo. The one that we didn't get to stop at on the drive down. So I was kind of excited about all this boxed NES stuff here. I mean look at the prices on these which is really not bad. Uh, my only issue was so... You can see all these have plastic on them. This is not the original plastic on all these. They they like reseal them all. So all of these except for this one were out just with their loose cartridge NES stuff. So all of these were actually like open on the top so I could open them up and look. I honestly didn't even open up any of these ones because I was really only buying them for the box at, at these prices anyway. So I was a little bit disappointed when I got home and realized that they were all literally cartridge and box only. Like no manuals, not no dust sleeves, nothing which was lame because they were actually selling dust sleeves there separately, like three for five dollars or something. So they like took them out of here and priced them separately, which is dumb. But they all had the styrofoam, 
which was good. And I actually have manuals for the majority of those to complete them. So again, at those prices, I really wasn't going to be too picky. This one though was a little bit disappointing. Um, this one was in their glass case and this one was actually, I, I mean, I had opened it now to see, but it was actually sealed all the way around. And so I asked the, the lady there when I, I picked it up, I said, Hey, you know, when you seal them like that, does that mean it's complete with the manual and stuff? And she's like, yeah, she's like, yeah, that's, that's just how we do it. And we put the seal on there to protect the box. And I get that they don't want to put the actual price tag on the box, which is nice, but like, I mean, this was one of the cheaper ones in their case. You know, they had more expensive ones that some of them were sealed, some of them were, weren't sealed, but this was just cartridge in box like the rest of these. There was no manual in here, no dust sleeve, nothing, which I probably would have bought it anyway at this price because that's like the price of a, well, it's like a $25, $30 cartridge and the box is pretty obscure. So I would have bought it anyway, but just a little disappointing that I assumed it came with the manual and it didn't, but that'll be one for the collection anyway. I did not even have that cartridge yet. Uh, here, I got a couple Game Boy games as well. This one was $2. I've never seen this game before called S Square Deal. Looks like some kind of like card or casino game or something. And then this one was $14.99 which I looked this one up while I was there and I saw that it was at least a 30 if not a $40 cartridge. I had no idea and I don't believe I had this one yet. So I grabbed that for $14.99. So that was everything from the replay, the second replay location in Toledo. And then we went over to Video Game. It's Video Game Underground. I said Video Games Underground earlier, but it's Video Game Underground. And I picked up this Box Model 3 Genesis system. I've had one of these on my wanted list for a while and I don't see these very often. I bought one on eBay, like I mentioned a while back, and the box ended up being all, you know, water damage and the system I had to take apart to fix it and everything. So that was kind of a, a bad deal. Well, not a bad deal, I didn't pay much for it, but this one, this box is in better shape. It's not perfect. I mean, it's, you know, it's got some wear on the front and stuff here. It looks like it might be a tiny bit sun faded, I'm not sure. But I'll be able to take, um, this was missing the cardboard insert. I can use the insert from that previous one that I bought to complete this one. Uh, control, I mean this needs to be cleaned up and whatever, but it came with the cores and there was one of the baggies in there and I have the instruction manual and stuff already so I should be able to complete that uh, which will be nice because I'll have all the one, two, and three models uh, box now for the collection. Also from that store, Onimusha Donna Dreams for $7.99 which I thought was pretty good. Uh, I think this is like at least a 20 if not a $25 game. It was complete with, um, there's two discs in there. The artwork or maybe it's just the case needs to be replaced but so I'll have to find another like dual disc case to replace that one but good deal there and then this one I just picked up because I'd never seen or heard of this game before track meet for the original Game Boy $4.99 uh, I just took a shot on it I mean I don't think it's worth a ton more than that but for the collection I, I was like you know I've never seen it before I'll grab it so this was again from video game underground the sketchy thing about this store was that I paid for the stuff or whatever, and then I asked if you know he had thrown my receipt in the bag, and he's like, oh, he's like, I don't do receipts. He's like, the, the price tags here act as the receipts. And I was like, oh, okay. And I didn't really think much of it until I got back in the car, and I was like, that's kind of weird. Like, I don't know. I'm not going to pretend I know, like, all the legalities and everything about, like, receipts, and especially, like, down in Ohio or whatever, but I'm fairly certain that they a store like that needs to give you something with like a date and time stamp on it and like with what like the sales tax was and everything because like yeah i mean these have the prices on them in the name of the store but there's no date there's no like you know subtotal sales tax anything that i paid so i don't know so this, someone might want to do some investigating on uh, video game underground in toledo ohio but i don't know i'm not trying to throw any game stores under the bus in this video that was just kind of a little bit sketchy to me so anyway that's gonna do it for this video, my uh, road trip down to Toledo and Columbus, Ohio. Thank you guys for sticking around and checking out the whole video. And until next time, take care.